Hi guys, my name's Tom Johnson. I'm an ethical hacker and social engineer. And today I'm gonna to give you a little bit of an insight into my world and what it's all about and what I've accomplished uh, over the time I've studied and how I've got into what I'm doing at the moment. So let's look back when I was a child. I was heavily involved in computers from the outset. I was pulled out of school early with no qualifications and I was given a basic system. It was a Commodore Amiga. Um, and I was told by my mother, learn that. Now, unfortunately, we didn't have the internet back in those days, so it was all about trial and error, seeing how things work, talking to your friends, learning things off other people, reading books. Yes, there were such things as books back in the day. <laughs> what we'd done is we used to get together with a group of friends and we used to have a little computer club and we'd teach each other things that we learned. It started out with playing games, but then very quickly the novelty of games wore off and you'd move on to why those games done what they done and how they worked and how you could change those games to do things that you wanted to do or to remove the boot sectors because it was all on discs at the time to be able to copy the games so you could have them without having to pay for them. Yes, it wasn't ethical or moral, but I didn't develop an ethical or moral code until I was a lot older. So then it was just a case of, wow, I wanted a new game, let's just copy it and have a go of it. Didn't realize I was getting sucked into software theft. Time went on, um, my skills developed. Back in the day, um, I learned how to code in QBasic and in a, uh, before that in a mega package called uh, Amos Basic and Blitz Basic. So it was all coding languages, though they were very structured, line one, line two, line three, etc. It wasn't like the modern languages that we have today, like Python, etc. As I developed on, I started getting into more trouble. It wasn't because I was a bad guy, it was just because I was curious or because I just wanted to play a joke on somebody. When I attended college, we had a rudimentary email system, which I found that if you change the headers on these little emails, you could send them to different places from different people. So I sent, I done silly things like sent messages from one lecturer to another saying they were in love with each other and, and just really immature things. It then progressed further. I used a program called Gatehound and I was scanning random subnets for open telnet ports so I could go in and have a look. Um, I did scan federal machines in my time. I did scan things that I shouldn't do. And the moral of that story is, is if you'd done that now, you would go to jail. You know, do not pass go, do not collect 200 pounds, straight to jail. Back then, it was a relatively new field and it wasn't enforced as much as it is now. But believe you me, if you break the law now, you will get caught and you will go to jail or you will get punished. So what you need to look at now is, as told to me by a good friend of mine, the industry is based upon trust. Do not breach that trust. If you get caught for doing something bad, you will not get looked at in a positive light nowadays. I try now to educate young people, to steer them into the right direction, away from that dark path, onto the light path. I've got a passion for, for teaching and, and, you know, seeing those eyes light up when they know that they can do something. So I try to use my past experiences to help further develop people now. I've been lucky to, to brush sleeves with the NCA, the FBI, um, the special operations units around the country, the police forces. Um, it's been an absolute journey and I have loved every single minute of it. I'm not gonna lie, I haven't got it always right, but sometimes you have to get it slightly wrong to learn from your mistakes. The best thing I ever done was went to uni. Um, I started with Teesside University. They have been super supportive of me. They've helped me out more than I could possibly ever have imagined that they would do. I've tried to help them out back. I mean, my final goal is to get a PhD and to work with Teesside University, be a lecturer. Yes, the private sector does pay more, but the education side of things, I hold it dear to me heart. If you get the chance to go to uni, my suggestion would be if that suits you and if it's right for you, do it and grasp it with both hands. Take every single opportunity you can and throw yourself at it. Yes, you'll be tired. Yes, you'll be fed up. Yes, you'll be exhausted, but it pays dividends. You give out 10%, you get back 150%. You know, you can do it and you can make a real difference. 
The thing to remember about uni is it's not spoon fed to you. You've got to go out and you've got to earn it. You've got to want to achieve and you've got to put in the hard work. If you don't, there's not somebody who says, hey, you are not doing this, you are not doing that. It will just reflect in your grades. Now, luckily, um, I've managed to get really good grades. I've worked hard. I've got firsts in most of my modules um, and I've had some real support. So things that I've done um, career-wise, I've done some real life penetration testing. So I've went into companies uh, from a social engineering point of view, broken through their human firewall, um, sat down in their main offices drinking cups of coffee most of the day, not being questioned, scamming their staff, manipulating the staff into divulging confidential information, um, and then popping it all into a report pertaining to how it was done. I've worked doing teaching and ran summer schools and lectured around the UK for colleges and universities. I've worked with some brilliant people along the way. I've learned so much. That's one thing you're going to have to understand about this field and, and understand it from the interim. It is always a learning job. You will never know enough. And the people who say, oh, I'm a professional, this, that, the other, be wary of those guys because the true people who know their stuff are the ones who admit that they don't know much at all. You know, they always see their gaps in their knowledge and they're always out trying to learn more. And I see these gaps in my knowledge all of the time, all of the time. I'm writing a scientific paper at the minute on um, encryption. You know, half of the things that I've learned I didn't even know existed. So you guys need to go out and understand that there is a world of information to learn and you will never be able to learn all of it. But as long as you can go and learn more than the person next to you, you'll always be respected by somebody. So put in the effort, work hard, believe in yourself. Another great thing I can say to you is take on an interest of your own. So mine, although it wasn't strictly the technical side of hacking, I had a passion for the social side of hacking, how to get somebody to do something or say something that they shouldn't necessarily do or say. So I've talked at a number of conferences. One of them was the Northeast Cyber Security Conference. Um, I was a guest speaker there. So I've talked at the prestigious ICDDF, the Information Communication Data and Digital Forensics Conference. That's a big one. That was in London um, and that was under the National Police Chiefs Council and the National Crime Agency. So I've, I've been around and I've had a great time while I've been doing it and I've learned loads. So I'm going to end the video giving you a little bit of a demonstration of a social engineering attack on a large company. Uh, I will talk you through this and hopefully you'll get a little bit of an insight into the world of social engineering. Thanks very much. Hi guys, this is Operation Invisible Ninja. It's a scamming job based upon the human firewall and social engineering. I was employed by a large organisation to do a test of this company. Uh, I was given a document of scope. It's your most important thing that you have to, to look into before starting anything. It's your rules of engagement, what you can do, what you can't do. And my job was to test their human firewall to see how their staff reacted to social engineering attacks. Now, initially, it was quite a secure building. So we started off by dressing up. There was a couple of us dressing up as sewage engineers. One of my colleagues went into the building, done a great job of planting that seed in their head. And all of a sudden, over a couple of days, Chinese whispers started and then staff would say hello to us when we were on their site. So it was expected that we would be there and it give us a little bit of leverage on where we could go, where we could move. We started out by assessing the physical layout of the place, looking for cameras. We went on Google Earth, looked for cameras on that as well, looked for little hidey holes. We found the cigarette area and we spent a little bit of time working on a drain near the cigarette area to see what we could find out. Following a full OSINT operation on around 300 staff, I prioritised three staff and reached out to them over LinkedIn, pretending, using my pretext, that I was a student looking for help on one of the attacks, that I was looking for employment on the other attack, and the last one was that I had a project that I wanted to work with this company. 
The last one, the project seemed to be the most promising. Psychologically, the lady was very protective and mothering and nurturing and very nice. So she was the, the target that I'd acquired. She'd become my mark. Uh, I went in with a button camera. I recorded the meetings. I went to the loo, uh, not because I needed the toilet, but because I wanted to take photographs of the visitors pass. You can see there straight away, they've got the, the guest Wi-Fi on there and they've got a standard lanyard as well. You can buy those lanyards on eBay in all different colors for about 10 quid for 50. I had some in the back of the car. So I went home, uh, mocked up a visitors pass and returned the day after walking straight past the, the reception, past the security and into their main office. So the first video you're going to see me in the actual inner sanctum, I started off in the toilets. This is so I could ground myself before I went on the walk. I walked past some meeting rooms on the left. I managed to plant devices in there to listen to meetings. As I walked further down, you will see some pink hearts on the wall. These are messages from one team to another thanking them. Great in a business, terrible from a security standpoint because it allows a social engineer to find out more information about the business. I sat in the tea area making cups of tea and recording meetings, etc, etc, and I didn't get detected for a while. Well, I'm in the main building, I've been let in. Now I'm going to see what we can find. I got bored so I started taking selfies, that's me um, taking photographs of the meetings as well. I then walked up to a lady on a photocopying machine and asked if it was behaving itself. I said I was from a photocopying company, she took it as gospel. Uh, I did manage to steal some confidential photocopying and then I got the, the lady to show me around where the other photocopiers were and this was because it allowed me to be seen with another member of staff. And obviously because I was associated with someone, the majority of the staff knew that I should be there. But really the reality was that I shouldn't be there. So I started getting bored again. I took some selfies with Kali Linux. Um, by the way, that's a real beard. Yes, it took ages to grow it. Um, and I even took selfies with staff. This is where it starts getting a bit dangerous. I managed to talk my way into a person's computer area. I asked her to step away from the computer. I said I was from uh, the technical support department and I wanted to check the uh, serial number. I did actually get caught filming and in the next video you will see me engaging with the staff and talking my way out of why I was filming. I don't normally have that problem to be honest with you. I'm normally never... Hiya. Hello. You all right? <laughs> it's, it's me. <laughs> Trying to work out this bloody torch, but I can pretty much see anyway, so it doesn't matter. We're not sure. Um, I've been asked by IT to get their serial number of it. And that is how I got that device in. That device was something called a USB rubber ducky, which is an HID attack platform. Shout out to Shannon Morse and Darren Kitching from Hack5. I decided to take oh, it a step me. further. What a nightmare. Don't be long. So I asked her to log off, I unplugged the machine and I walked out of the building with it. I walked past all the staff, um, nobody batted an eyelid, onto the foyer, through the locked door and onto the stairwell where staff were coming in. Nobody questioned me at all. As you can see, the staff coming in here. I got onto the stairs and then something catastrophic happened. 
Did I get caught? No, I didn't get caught. I pulled out my phone and I dropped it all the way down the stairs, right through the middle. And it smashed in the foyer, which had people in it. And they were looking at me with a stolen computer under me arm. So did I get caught there? No, distraction. Watch how I do it. We're going to test to see how good this case is, because if it's good, it wouldn't have broke. Can you believe it? It's fine. <laughs> that was lucky. So it allowed me to get seen, I managed to talk my way out of it, and it took about five minutes to make it look believable. I then went to leave the building. And this is where we learn our lesson. The staff members upstairs noticed a miscorrelation in data in their subconscious. It gave them a gut feeling and then they acted upon that gut feeling. The member of staff ran down multiple flights of stairs to try and catch me. Your destination is on the left. Hello. Sorry, can I just confirm who you are? Wait, wait. Uh, yeah, would you like to come inside? So that is the face of a guilty man. Yes, I got caught, but I got caught in the parking lot. So listen to everybody. If somebody takes your computer or your systems or something from your company and is risking 10 years in jail to do so under the Computer Misuse Act, never try to apprehend them outside because it could get very dangerous very quickly. She was really good. Once we got inside, she confirmed who I was, who my contact was. She got a little bit of a shock and then I was free to carry on my attacks. So this was a very quick overview of an effective social engineering attack on a large company with about 450 staff.